Welcome to the Total Joint Replacement Preoperative Education Class by Mid-States Connecticut Orthopedic Institute. As a nurse navigator, I'll walk you through the steps for you to prepare for surgery, to know what to expect during your hospital stay, and to formulate a plan for after discharge. I'll then work with the discharge planners to set that plan in motion. At Mid-State Medical Center, our mission is to improve the health and healing of people in the communities we serve. Our vision is to be nationally respected for excellence in patient care and most trusted for personalized coordinated care. Our goal for you is to be healthy, comfortable, and active. We want you to be able to move and enjoy life, but we do have expectations. We want you to participate in physical therapy and take the medications you and the doctor have agreed upon. It's important because that is how you are going to get better. We want you to transition home and be safe. Safety is the most important thing. Recovery from orthopedic surgery has changed. In the past, patients would stay in the hospital for multiple days and then go to rehab for two to three weeks. This is no longer the case. We find that patients that go home do better faster. The first reason is that by being home, you are lowering the risk of infections. The longer you remain in any medical facility, there is a higher risk of infection. We want to eliminate that. The second reason we recommend home is mobility. Patients assume that because you receive therapy twice a day at rehab that they will improve quicker. But that is not the case. For safety, a medical facility will require that you only walk around with staff. That limits how much therapy you are receiving. At home, we encourage you to get up throughout the day, resting in between. It is common to tire quickly during the recovery period. Your length of stay in the hospital has also evolved. Our goal is to discharge you home the day after your surgery. We must first evaluate how you are doing medically. A member of the medical team, with the direction of your surgeon, as well as the discharge planner, will speak with you if we felt you needed to stay longer in the hospital. Please note that your length of stay is based on medical necessity. As this is a scheduled surgery, your insurance company expects you to prepare ahead of time for when the doctor discharges you. Our therapists strive to make you independent. However, we do recommend that you have a coach, whether it be a spouse, family member, or friend. Someone who could either stay with you the first few nights or at least check in on you periodically. If there is a concern about your safety, the doctor may approve you to go to a rehabilitation facility. However, you need to be aware that insurance must also approve rehab. Unfortunately, this cannot be done ahead of time. Insurance agencies will not make a decision until after your surgery. Therefore, we want to stress again the importance of preparing to return home and having a coach. We encourage your coach to be in the hospital for at least one physical therapy session. This way, they can see how best to help you. As we want you to experience a full day of therapy, we would anticipate discharge between approximately 3 and 4 p.m. The information about the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services bundled payment model is directed towards the patients with Medicare Part A or B as their primary insurance. Mid-State Medical Center does participate in the bundle payment model. The goal of the program is to improve the quality of care delivered to Medicare beneficiaries needing joint replacement surgery, to lower the cost for the care provided for joint replacement patients, and to help shift the U.S. healthcare system towards paying for quality rather than quantity. This video is providing general information to you. Please keep in mind that your doctor may tell you something that conflicts with what you are hearing here. Always follow your surgeon's instructions. Before your surgery, you are required to see your primary doctor. If you have a cardiologist, you may need to see them as well, based on your primary doctor's recommendation. These doctors need to make sure you are medically optimized for surgery. They will also talk to you about any medications you should temporarily stop before your surgery. It is important that both your primary doctor and surgeon agree on what medications you should take before and after surgery. The most common medications that are of concern are any blood thinners or cardiac medications. Please make sure that your doctors know if you take any flaxseed, fish oil, or vitamin E tablets. These can also increase bleeding and should be stopped before surgery. 
you will need to have your nose swabbed prior to surgery. It is recommended you do this within 30 days before your surgery. The lab will be checking for staph, a certain type of bacteria. If you test positive, we then have time to provide you with medication prior to surgery. Your doctor will inform you of your results. Good nutrition is important before surgery. This will help make sure you will have the strength post-surgery for rehabilitation. Eating healthy, well-balanced meals include iron-rich foods such as meat, fish, poultry, or whole grain foods, vitamin C to help absorb iron, and raw fruits, vegetables, and beans make up your high-fiber foods. You should stop drinking any alcoholic beverages one week prior to surgery. This will help prevent excess bleeding. Please inform your health care team of your drinking history because serious harm can result from alcohol withdrawal when not properly managed. Ideally, you should stop smoking at least two weeks before your surgery. Nicotine hinders the healing process, potentially negatively affecting your surgical incision's length and quality of healing. If you need dental work, have it done at least two weeks before your surgery. After joint replacement, your surgeon may want you to take antibiotics before any future dental work. In order to prepare your home, you should temporarily remove any throw rugs. This is a fall risk while you are using a rolling walker. Please make sure you have a clear pathway from your bed to your bathroom to where you will spend most of your day. You may not feel up to cooking. Therefore, we recommend you have some meals prepared ahead of time. If you have pets, make sure you have someone that is able to assist you with their walks. Also, if you are recovering from posterior hip replacement, you will temporarily not be able to bend at the waist to clean up animal waste. The afternoon before your surgery, you will receive a call from our staff informing of your time of arrival. If you are having surgery on a Monday, they will call you on the Friday before that. It is important to drink plenty of fluids before and after your surgery. Starting midnight before your surgery, you are not to have any food or drink. Your surgeon may tell you to drink an electrolyte-based drink two hours before your surgery. However, unless you are specifically told this, you must refrain from eating or drinking. If you are required to take medicine the morning of your surgery, you may do so with only a sip of water. Prior to surgery, you will need to prep your surgical site. Your surgeon will give you specific instructions on when to do this and what type of cleaning product you should use. Most commonly, you are asked to use either chlorhexidine wipes or Hippoclens cleanser. Do not shave any closer than three days before your surgery as you may accidentally nick yourself. We recommend the night before your surgery you should take a shower or bath. Put on fresh pajamas, place clean sheets on your bed, and shut your bedroom door so that no animals lay on your bed. Before your return home, ask family or a friend to change the bed sheets once again. The morning of your surgery, it is likely you will be nervous or anxious. This is normal. Therefore, it is a good idea to pack for the hospital ahead of time. You should also keep a list of any last-minute questions. It is easy to forget something you wanted to ask once you enter the hospital. When packing your bags, it is important to bring certain items. If you have sleep apnea, we will provide you with a machine, but you should bring your own mask or mouth guard. You will feel more comfortable with your own equipment. Bring your dentures in a case, but do not wear them on the morning of your surgery. Come to the hospital wearing your hearing aids. Before you are brought into the operating room, we will have you put them in your case and they will be locked up until your surgery is finished. Wear your glasses and keep any contact lenses at home. Do not wear any jewelry. Please remove any nail polish as we check your oxygen levels through monitors worn on either your fingers or toes. The morning after surgery, you will be asked to put on your own clothes. Wear a lighter shirt for when you are exercising. You may feel warm. While resting in your hospital room, however, it is a good idea to have a sweater or sweatshirt. It is common to have some swelling in your legs and feet after surgery. Whether you choose to wear shorts or pants, it is recommended that they do not have a button or zipper. Ones with elastic or drawstrings will be more comfortable and easier to put on. If you are having knee surgery, please make sure the bottom of your pants are not tight. The therapist needs to be able to roll up your pant leg to look at your knee. 
Sneakers are the ideal footwear, but you may choose to wear a different type of shoe. Your feet may be swollen, so bring your current sneakers rather than purchasing brand new ones. If you prefer other shoes, they should have a back to them. No slippers or flip-flops. We also provide you with non-slip socks. For entertainment, each hospital room has a television and free Wi-Fi. You are also welcome to bring personal items such as books, a tablet, or phone. To help prevent infection, it is best that we keep your body temperature warm. If your surgery is in the summer months, we suggest you do not sit in a car where the air conditioning is blowing directly on you. For those of you whose surgery is in the winter months, please ask a family member to warm up the car prior to you entering it. You will not be able to drive yourself home. You will need to have someone drop you off and pick you up. Connecticut Orthopedic Institute provides free valet parking. If you are unable to walk into the hospital, a wheelchair and transport will be provided. Please do not bring any walkers or canes unless you require them to walk into the facility. While here, we will provide you with the necessary equipment. Upon entering our orthopedic institute, you will be shown to our registration desk. Please bring your driver's license and insurance cards so that we can verify your information. Your coach or family will be given the option of accepting a pager or providing us with a cell phone number. This way, they may be informed when you are out of surgery and when the surgeon is available to speak with them. Our staff will bring you to the waiting area until it is time to enter the preoperative department. You should start certain exercises now before you come in for surgery. Besides strengthening your arms and legs, you are also instilling muscle memory. Before surgery, you can perform one to three sets of each exercise for 10 to 30 repetitions as tolerated. After surgery, consult with your physical therapist for the appropriate number of exercise sets and repetitions. Ankle pumps. Stretch your toes back towards your knees. Next, point them forward away from you. This is important as it helps prevent blood clots. You can perform these throughout the day. Hip abduction and adduction. Lie on your back with your knees straight and your toes pointed up. Move your leg out to the side as far as you comfortably can. Then slide your leg back to the starting position. Sliding your foot along your sheets may be difficult. You may do this exercise while standing and holding onto a countertop. Gluteal sets. Squeeze your buttock muscles together. Hold for a slow count of five, then relax. Quad sets. Tighten your thigh muscles by pushing the back of your knee down into the bed. Hold for a slow count of five, then relax. Heel slides. Bend your knee and pull your foot back towards your buttocks, then slide it back to the starting position. If you have hip precautions after surgery, this exercise should be done while reclining in bed. Leg raises. Straighten your operative leg and tighten your thigh muscles. Bend the opposite leg to reduce stress to your spine. Lift your leg several inches off the bed. You do not have to go any higher than your bent knee. Slowly return your leg back down to the starting position. Short arc sets. Roll up a towel or small blanket and place it under your knee. Straighten your knee while lifting your heel off the bed. Hold this position for five seconds. Then bring your foot back down to the bed. Long arc sets. While sitting upright in a chair, straighten your knee. Hold this position for five seconds, then slowly return to the starting position. Modified squats. Stand while holding onto a counter or table. Bend your knees and squat, pushing your buttocks back as though you were going to sit in a chair. Knees should remain behind your toes. Maintain a straight back. If you have hip precautions, make sure you do not bend past 90 degrees. Heel raises. Stand while holding onto a counter or table. Raise your heels off of the floor, then return to the starting position. Pendulums. Stand while holding onto a counter or table. Let your arm hang down. Use your body weight to swing it forward, then backward. Pendulums alternate. Stand while holding onto a counter or table. Let your operative arm hang down. Swing your arm in a clockwise circular motion, 
Then try in a counterclockwise direction. Finger extension and flexion. Open your hand, spreading your fingers wide. Then curl your fingers into a fist. Elbow flexion and extension. Place your arm on the armrest with your palm facing up. Slowly bend your elbow as far as you can, then bring it back down to the starting position. Wrist flexion and extension. Place your arm on the armrest with your palm facing down, then flex your wrist up and down. Next, turn your arm so that your palm is facing up and flex your wrist up and down. Upon entering the preoperative department, we will have you undress. We can lock up your belongings or you may give them to your coach or family. At this time, you will be asked to lay on a stretcher. Your family is welcome to join you at this time. Your nurse will go over your current medications and may ask you other questions that we would like verified. We will check your vital signs and begin your IV fluids. A bear hugger will be placed. This is a gown or cover that is placed on you. It is connected to a machine that blows warm air over your body. Again, this is to help prevent any infection. Patients are given IV antibiotics. These are preventative against infection. The first dose is given just before surgery, while additional doses are given later that evening. The anesthesiologist will come to speak with you prior to surgery to discuss the type of anesthesia you will be given. Though general anesthesia is still available, we prefer to do a regional nerve block. This allows us to only numb the area of your joint replacement. Patients also state that they have less side effects, such as feeling nauseated or groggy. You will discuss the details of your anesthesia with your anesthesiologist before entering the operating room. When it is time for your surgery to begin, we will bring your family into the waiting room. They are welcome to remain in the hospital or leave the premises. You will be wheeled into the operating room, and our medical team will begin to prepare for the surgery. You will feel additional IV lines being placed. Staff will be covering you with blankets, as it is often quite cold in the operating room. The circulating nurse will be available to you should you have any last-minute questions or concerns. Surgery usually takes between 60 to 90 minutes. While you are under anesthesia, we place a catheter in your bladder. Before you wake up, we will remove it. The first time you urinate afterwards, you might feel a slight burning or see a bit of blood. This is normal, but if it persists, alert your nurse. Once the surgery is completed, our staff will place you in your hospital bed. You will then be brought to the post-anesthesia care unit or PACU. The length of your stay in the PACU will be determined by many factors, including the type of procedure and the nature of the anesthetic used. We also want to make sure your pain is under control and we need to monitor your wound. Generally, patients remain in the PACU for one to two hours. Family members are welcome to visit and will be notified by our state-of-the-art paging system once you are ready for visitors. Next, you will be brought to your hospital room. All rooms at Connecticut Orthopedic Institute are private. We have many team members ready to care for you. But with so many faces, it can get confusing. Besides wearing our badges and writing our names down on your patient whiteboard, we have also color-coded our uniforms. Staff in the light blue are the physician assistants. These licensed, thoroughly trained medical providers work closely with your surgeon in the operating room and monitor your care during your entire stay. PAs examine you daily and are in continued communication with your surgeon. Nurses will be seen wearing royal blue scrubs. Our dedicated team is essential to the care and the recovery of our patients. They have expertise in the post-operative needs of an orthopedic patient. Clinical care associates will be seen wearing green scrub tops. These staff members will provide care to you in the hospital such as vital sign monitoring, bathing, or toileting. Team members wearing maroon are physical and occupational therapists. Physical therapy trains you to be safe while walking or when you transfer in and out of your bed. They will also provide you with strengthening exercises. 
occupational therapy retrains you how to self-care while maintaining any precautions. Environmental services, who wear a flowered top, and our dietary partners in gray, are our valued team members who you will see throughout your stay. Our goal is to make your experience exceptional, and we strive to provide a clean environment and tasty meals. Each floor has its own private kitchen, allowing meals to be delivered swiftly and at the appropriate temperature. Once in your hospital room, your nurse will provide you with information on your surroundings and any equipment you may see. Normally, as we walk around, we use our full lung capacity. When we find ourselves laying or sitting for longer periods of time, we tend to do more shallow breathing, and this can lead to pneumonia. An incentive spirometer is a small breathing apparatus that allows you to exercise or use your full lung capacity to prevent pneumonia from occurring. Your nurse will show you how it works. We encourage you to take it home and continue with your exercises for at least one week. As stated earlier, you will be given IV antibiotics and you may see this hanging on your IV pole. Along with that is often a bag of saline fluid. This is to prevent dehydration. Once you begin drinking fluids, we will be able to remove the saline. Patients having total hip replacement or total shoulder surgery should expect to see a white, bulky dressing to the joint. Immediately after surgery, we place extra padding to prevent drainage and the introduction of germs into the wound. Total knee replacement patients may be surprised to see not only their knee with a dressing, but rather their whole leg. To help prevent swelling, your surgeon will place an ACE wrap from hip to toes. With all of these dressings, before you return home, the physician assistant will remove the extra padding and leave a much smaller dressing in place. Each surgeon will determine the best dressing for each patient. Some may use a gauze dressing requiring periodic changes. Others may choose to use an Aquacel or Mepilex dressing that may remain on for longer periods. You will be provided with instructions on your wound care before you leave the hospital. If you are aware of any allergies to adhesives you may have, please inform your surgeon prior to surgery. While in surgery, your surgeon may decide to place a drain. There are many different types of drains. Drains will have a small tube placed near your joint and held in position by a few stitches. The tube then connects to a container that allows our staff to monitor the amount of blood and fluid coming from your wound. If this is required, it is often removed the next day. You will not be discharged home with a drain in place. Ice is very important to an orthopedic patient. It helps to decrease swelling, which then can decrease pain. Total hip or total shoulder replacement patients will be given a bag of ice placed against their dressing. Total knee patients will see two tubes coming out of their dressing. This is a cooling unit. The tubes are connected to a bladder. This is a thin, waterproof sac that is placed on the knee. The other end of the tubes are connected to a machine with ice-cold water. The machine pushes the water up one tube, along the knee, and then down the other tube back to the machine. This allows a constant flow of cold water over your knee joint. For total shoulder or knee replacement patients, your doctor may order a similar machine to be used at home. This would be done by your surgeon's office so that they can discuss with you possible out-of-pocket costs. Whether you use a cooling machine, gel pack, or bag of ice, it is important to ice your new joint throughout the day. However, you must first place a cloth or dressing against your skin. Never have the ice bag touching your skin directly. Blood clots are a risk after surgery. When we walk around, the action of our foot hitting the ground and the contraction of our muscles help push blood back up to the heart. By sitting or laying for long periods of time, it puts us at risk for forming a blood clot. Besides medication and exercises, we have a third way to help prevent the formation of blood clots. During your hospital stay, you will be wearing sequential compression sleeves. A sleeve is placed around each calf. This is connected to a machine that slowly inflates the sleeves with air and gently squeezes your calf, helping the blood to return to your heart. After a few moments, the air will release and the sleeve will deflate. This process will then repeat. When it comes to medication, things can become confusing. 
In addition to your normal medicine, you will now be receiving new medications specific to your surgery. The manufacturer our hospital uses is most likely different from the one your pharmacy does. Therefore, many patients are apprehensive about taking pills that look different. Medications can also have generic or trade names. For instance, you may call your blood thinner warfarin, while our staff calls it Coumadin. Your nurse will always provide you with the name of each medication you are to be given and an explanation of its purpose. But we encourage you to ask questions. We would never want you to accept medication or a treatment you are not comfortable with. Another way to prevent blood clots is to use blood thinners. There are many different types of blood thinners and most are in pill form, but they can also be given by injection. Prior to surgery, talk to your surgeon on their preferences for blood thinners. It is important to be aware of what you will be given and any risk or possible out-of-pocket costs. Our staff wants to make sure you are as comfortable as possible. One way is to keep your pain under control. We use this pain chart so that you can help guide us to how much medication is required and its effectiveness. A rating of 0 tells that you have no pain, while a rating of 10 will let us know you are in extreme pain. There are different options we can provide for pain control. The regional block given in surgery can last from 1 to 2 days. Your surgeon will order you medicine in pill form that will begin to work roughly 30 minutes after taken. Some may also prescribe long-acting medication. This pill will often last 12 hours and will be scheduled for twice a day. However, if neither of these are fully helping, you may be given medicine through your IV in liquid form. This is a fast-acting medication designed to get you over the hump while we try to adjust your other pain medication. You will not be allowed to have the IV medication at home. Some patients find that anti-inflammatories work well. By decreasing the swelling, you can decrease your pain. We have already spoken on a few ways we try to prevent infection. Staph testing, chlorhexidine or CHG wipes, and keeping your body temperature warm. But most importantly is hand washing. Whether in the hospital or home, it is imperative that you and your family maintain good hand washing. To wash your hands properly, you should be wetting your hands and applying soap. Rub your hands well. Remember to get between your fingers and under nails. While washing, you should sing Happy Birthday to make sure you are doing this for the correct length of time. Purell hand sanitizer is provided throughout the hospital. All medical and non-medical staff should be using the Purell before entering your hospital room. Earlier in the video, we discussed getting your nares swabbed so that we could test for staff. One type is methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA. Should you test positive, you will be given medicine to place in your nares prior to surgery. You will also be given an IV antibiotic specifically for this type of staph. Our staff will be required to wear gloves and yellow gowns when entering your room. You will be considered MRSA positive until you have two negative tests. This is all done as an abundance of precaution. We have a lot to accomplish in the short time you are with us at the Connecticut Orthopedic Institute. You will have multiple therapy sessions. You have nurses and aides continually in your room for medication and providing personal care. Doctors and physician assistants will be assessing your medical well-being. Members of the phlebotomy team will need to draw blood. And you need to eat. Furthermore, sleep is a critical component to the healing process. We do our best to give you time to rest, but there are necessary check-ins. It is important to try to nap throughout the day whenever you get the opportunity. Our number one priority is your safety. Patients are often surprised by how quickly they are able to get up and walk around. Unfortunately, this can lead to patients forgetting to call for assistance. While you are with us, we ask that you always call for a staff member before you get out of bed. If we assist you into the bathroom, please do not attempt to get back to your bed or chair by yourself. Physical therapy is an absolute necessity for orthopedic patients. Getting up and walking helps prevent blood clots, pressure sores, pneumonia, and the formation of scar tissue. 
The Institute has its own gym, which includes required durable medical equipment, a staircase, and car setup to prepare you for discharge home. The therapists at the Connecticut Orthopedic Institute work with you multiple times during the day, both individually and alongside other patients. Our joint camp allows you to visit with other patients and to help encourage each other to get back to the activities you love. Therapists speak with your nurses to try to coordinate your pain medication so that it is given approximately 30 to 60 minutes before your therapy begins. Our nurses and aides are trained to assist you to walk throughout the floors even after your therapy sessions. It is important to change positions throughout the day to avoid scar tissue. A buildup of scar tissue can cause your joint to remain contracted, causing a limp. And we strongly encourage you to eat all your meals while sitting up in your hospital room chairs rather than in bed. Eating upright is better for your digestion, and we want to promote your activities of daily living. Our goal is to get you home safely to make sure you can be independent at home. You need to be able to get in and out of bed, to walk with a rolling walker or cane, and to be able to go up and down stairs. You will be provided with low-impact exercises to practice. We will alert to any precautions or movements you should not do. You will then need to practice moving about while maintaining those precautions. Finally, we need to see that you can safely use the toilet. Patients having posterior total hip replacement will have precautions for three to six weeks. These precautions are taught so that you do not dislocate your new hip joint. You should never cross your legs. Do not bend over beyond 90 degrees. This can be tricky going from a sitting to standing position. Our therapist will teach you the best way to do this. Do not rotate feet excessively inward or outward. Do not twist at the waist. For total knee replacements, when crossing your legs, it can put a lot of stress on the outside and inside of your knee. From your hip to your ankle is a no-pillow zone. Extension, or how straight your leg is, is very important. If you don't get full extension, meaning zero degrees, you will walk with a limp. A pillow underneath your knee can cause the muscle to tighten and cause a contraction. Instead, place a pillow underneath your ankle. This will help gravity push your knee straight. Total shoulder replacement patients should not bear weight on the operative arm. Your arm will be placed into a sling or shoulder immobilizer and you should not attempt to rotate your arm outwards or towards your back. The two main pieces of equipment for total knee and total hip replacements is a rolling walker and cane. Your walker should only have wheels in front. Walkers with no wheels or ones with four are dangerous after this type of surgery and may cause a fall. Your cane should be adjustable. If it is not at the correct height, you can slowly hurt your back. It should also be a single point at the bottom. Canes that stand up on their own are not recommended as they cause a higher risk of tripping and can perpetuate a limp. Each insurance company has their own policies on what equipment they will cover. You may call your insurance company in advance, or our nurse navigator and case managers can assist you once you are in the hospital. Equipment can be ordered while you are in the hospital and delivered to your room. Commodes or raised toilet seats are encouraged for posterior total hip replacement patients so that they can maintain their precautions. However, if your toilet is very low, any patient can request these items and we can verify insurance coverage. A hip kit is also recommended for posterior total hip replacement patients to maintain precautions. These are not a covered item and must be paid out of pocket. It is also possible to purchase this item on Amazon. A hip kit should include a reacher, sock aid, long-handled sponge, long-handled shoehorn, and elastic shoelaces. These items can also be purchased separately. Our occupational therapist will assist you in learning how to use these tools. Your doctor will let you know when you may shower. Shower chairs and tub transfer benches are not covered items. Though they can be ordered while in the hospital, they tend to be more costly. You may want to compare pricing at your local medical equipment store or online. 
If our staff is concerned about your ability to move safely, we will speak with you about short-term rehab. It is recommended that you do not remain there for more than one week, but again, your safety is the number one concern. Your surgeon and insurance company must approve you go to a skilled nursing facility. Once approved, it is your choice which one you will go to, though they must be in network with your insurance. The social workers at the Connecticut Orthopedic Institute will help facilitate this process. They will contact the rehabilitation facility and your insurance company. They may also request transport. Please note, most insurances do not cover the cost of transport from the hospital. Family is allowed to transport you, but if you wish for a medical transport, an out-of-pocket cost will ensue. When it's time for you to leave the hospital, you will have a discharge folder. It will have all your medical instructions for wound care, your medication regimen, and your prescriptions. Hospitals are not allowed to call narcotics into pharmacies. You or your coach will have to bring it to your pharmacy. Your nurse will sit down with you and your coach to go over all of your instructions. If you have any questions or concerns after discharge, you should always check with your doctor, but your discharge packet will also include the phone number of the nurse navigators. We are an additional resource for you to utilize. When it is time to leave, our staff will help you into a wheelchair and bring you down to the entrance where your transportation will be waiting. If you discharge directly home, we will request a visiting nurse agency come to work with you. You may choose which agency is used. If you do not have a preference, let the nurse navigator know and we can give you choices of which your doctors recommend. Hartford Healthcare at Home, a part of our healthcare system, is considered one of our preferred providers. If you are interested, we will check if they service your town. If you plan on staying with a friend or family, please make sure you provide us with their address so that we send the home care staff to the correct home. A nurse and physical therapist will be provided. They visit your home for two weeks. How often they come is determined by your surgeon. We will provide that information in your discharge folder as well as discuss it with you prior to you leaving. Though occupational therapy or home health aids are not normally requested, we can do so if there is a medical need. While in the hospital, both your physical and occupational therapist will be in communication with the medical team and nurse navigator to determine what is required for home. Total shoulder replacement patients do not often receive home care services. If our therapist is concerned about your mobility or safety, we may send a therapist to your home once or twice for a home safety evaluation. Most often, though, you will wait until your surgeon allows you to go to outpatient therapy. After the two weeks, you should be able to go to outpatient therapy. You may go to your surgeon's office if they have a therapy staff or anywhere else you may choose. How long you are in outpatient therapy depends on how quickly you improve. Your surgeon and therapist will make that decision. As each insurance policy is different, we recommend you call your insurance benefits line and ask how much home therapy you are entitled to. Please make sure to also inquire if those visits also include the outpatient therapy. There are certain policies that combine both home and outpatient services. Upon discharge, our nurse navigators will be calling you periodically. We want to answer any questions or concerns. We want to make sure the home care staff or rehabilitation facility is doing their job appropriately. Most of all, we want to assist you so that we can prevent any unnecessary return visits to the hospital. We are honored that you are choosing and trusting the Connecticut Orthopedic Institute for your orthopedic care. We hope you found this information helpful. We look forward to meeting you and delivering a world-class, exceptional experience.